Perhaps the most widely used form of control, especially for single input, single output system, is what's called PID control, where P stands for proportional, I for integral, and D for derivative. And let me explain how this works. It's actually not that difficult at all to understand. Okay, so we're going to focus on uh, this portion over here, because that's where the controller works. And so there's going to be some error input, which is E of P, in, and which has the Laplace transform E. And we have the output U, which is the uh, because of the uh, controller's action D. So our goal is basically to decide what D looks like. In proportional mode control, uh, we are going to make the control action just a constant multiplied by the error. So we're going to say that u equals kp, where kp is the proportional proportionality constant. It's a scalar multiplied by e, where e is the error term, which is the input over here. And uh, this is uh, this means that if the error is zero, then the control action is going to be zero as well. It's going to do nothing. It's not going to take any control action at all. And so in, in cases where we need to always have some amount of control action, even when there is no error, or we want to maintain the equilibrium with some control action, this is not going to work. So the control action is proportional to the error. And the bigger the error, the more the control action. So if you think about the broomstick, what it means is if somebody jostles the broomstick, which is being balanced in your hand harder, then you're going to react more to it. Uh, and this value over here is called the control gain, and uh, this or, or the loop gain. And this gain tells us how much control action we're going to take in response to an error. So if the loop gain is large, we're going to take a very large control action, even with a small amount of error, which means we react quickly to respond to disturbance. But if the loop gain is large, then we can end up with an unstable system. And uh, we'll look into that in just a moment. But for now, let me focus on the second part, which is integral control. And with integral control, we're going to have the following. We're going to say u equals ki, which is the uh, constant of proportionality, uh, integral e, which is e of t dt, or in the Laplace transform, this is u of t. This is in the Laplace domain. We're going to say, let me be very clear here, this is um, u of t, and then u of s is going to be ki uh, e over s, because this is the Laplace transform of the integral, this is 1 over s, and that's what we have for the integral. And so what's happening here intuitively is that we're taking the cumulative error that has happened over time. And if this cumulative error is not zero, then we are going to take some control action depending on the value k sub i. And so this means that there won't be any, uh, there, won't, there, will all, there will be control action even if the current value of error is zero, even uh, uh, as long as there is some accumulated error from the past. Whereas in the proportional case, if the current error is zero, then the control action is going to be zero. Whereas a cumulative error is taken into account with the integral mode. Unfortunately, integral mode on its own can lead to oscillations, and we'll see that in an example. So uh, norm we never use integral mode on its own. And then the D stands for derivative mode. And in derivative mode, as you can expect, we are going to have the uh, U of T is being given, is given by uh, KD for derivative, uh, DE by DT, just the derivative of E. And it, if you take the Laplace transform of that, we get U equals KD uh, ES. KD E times S, where uh, S is the complex variable. Uh, again, because the derivative corresponds to multiplying by S. So in the derivative mode control, what happens is that we are essentially going to dampen the control input. Uh, this is what's going to happen, uh, and like we see that in the example. 
and that uh, it also counteracts some of the issues that we have with integral controls. So if you, a, a judicious combination of derivative and integral control is uh, usually very good. Um, the uh, intuitive feeling of derivative mode control is that it says that if the when the error trend is increasing, so if the error is going up, the DE by DT is going to be increasing, then we're going to take more control action because our trend is going up. If the error, error is diminishing, then the control action is going to slow down. And of course, if the control error is staying the same, then D by DT is zero and there's no control action at all. And so the, uh, it turns out that with the, with the derivative controller, we're essentially going to be doing some dampening of the control. Okay, so this is just the overview of the three values of PID. And often these are combined, so we'll use we'll choose constants Ki, uh, Kp, and Kd all at the same time, so as to tune the controller to match the control action that we want. But uh, now I'll go and do some examples for each of these three modes. <laughs> 